thanks a lot and uh, thanks uh, to the organizers for the invitation uh, to speak uh, to speak in this in the summer school uh, so I'll uh, discuss presentation lemmas uh, especially in in mixed characteristic uh, but to, to begin with let me uh, sort of recall what they are about uh, since it's somewhat of a technical statement let me uh, begin by discussing the role of these lemmas and uh, how, how they arose in what context. Okay, so for this uh, I will fix uh, I will fix some base field K and it to, to summarize, uh, presentation lemmas, presentation lemmas are, are, are tools which uh, allows one to study functors uh, f uh, on k-schemes uh, such, that, such that these f uh, satisfy a Nisnevich excision, excision for Nisnevich uh, squares. And given, given such an F, somehow loosely speaking, and uh, combining uh, with, with these geometric uh, so, sort of lemmas, and with some sort of a one invariance statement or property uh, for the functor F, uh, what one gets in a somewhat formal way, uh, pu purity uh, and uh, and or uh, injectivity uh, statements, well, theorems, uh, for F restricted on smooth, smooth case schemes. So, so the, these, these two ingredients are somehow uh, are a machine how to uh, access how to from from general properties of of of, of, of this functor f, how to access uh, somewhat uh, somewhat deeper properties of f when restricted to non non singular non singular non singular inputs. Uh, well, uh, let me just give uh, some examples of what kinds of f uh, one applies this to. In fact, we've seen uh, a lot of examples of f uh, during during these these two weeks. And uh, well, uh, for example, uh, algebraic K theory, or it's uh, homo homotopy groups of the algebraic K theory spectrum, or et al homology, uh, are the kinds of functors to which one applies, or, or the Brouwer group, or, or torsors under uh, a reductive group. Are, are the kinds of functors uh, to, 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 which, to which this procedure applies. And there are, there are many more really uh, sort of, uh, I mean, we've, see, we've really seen many, many examples of all kinds of motivic homologies to which one, uh, one could, uh, one could uh, consider this. And so uh, presentation lemmas, on the one hand, uh, they are geometric statements that refine uh, Noether normalization, refine the Noether normalization theorem, which, uh, well, let me just recall that Noether normalization would say that any finite type uh, uh, K algebra is, is actually finite over, over the affine space of the same dimension. You say if that algebra is of, of equal dimension. Uh, so, there are some sort of refinements of, 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 that, of that basic statement one learns in commutative algebra. And they were first, uh, first introduced by Quillen, or first, well, introduced and used uh, by Quillen to settle, well, to study algebraic A theory, uh, namely to settle the equal characteristic case of the Gersten conjecture. Uh, for algebraic A theory. Uh, it's a conjecture that's uh, still open in general, and its statement is, is as follows. Uh, so 
this uh, this is from these uh, famous three free, free volumes where uh, Quill and Solch uh, K theory uh, papers appear, and also Gersten formulates uh, his conjecture. Uh, the conjecture is about uh, non singular rings. So, for example, uh, local rings of smooth varieties over, over a field, or more general, one allows any regular uh, semi local uh, ring R. Uh, and and one denotes uh, one one denotes uh, well okay so uh, then the claim is that the so-called Gersten complex is exact uh, the uh, for for every degree the following complex is exact for every uh, homotopical degree n and it's a complex that describes the nth k group of this regular semilocal ring R in terms of the nth, nth k group of the total ring of fractions. If, yeah, I mean, typically R is just a domain without loss generality, it's just this fraction field. In particular, the, the first, the, the map from the k theory of R to the k theory of this fraction field is supposed to be injective. That's sort of the injectivity. Uh, injectivity part in this uh, sort of somewhat vague uh, mechanism that I've described here. Uh, and uh, the next term is the purity part. And it says uh, that if we sum overall primes P of height one uh, in uh, of R and look at this kind of connecting map to the N minus first uh, K group of, of the residue field at that prime, then uh, every every element in the k theory and k theory of uh, of the fraction field, whose sort of residues at every height one prime vanish, must actually arise in a unique manner from uh, from from the nth k theory of the regular semilocal ring itself, and uh, this this sequence actually continues. Uh, then one takes uh, the sum of primes of height of height two. Kn minus two of the residue fields there, and uh, sort of uh, so on. Okay, so uh, that's. Uh, so to formulate it, one is the work of Quillen that constructs the boundary maps. Yes, yes, uh, it's. Uh, it's, I mean, yeah, it's this deep work going on in, in constructing these maps and the, so, and the spectral sequence out of which this arises. Uh, this is kind of a long story, but uh, uh, yeah, but uh, well, for example, uh, well, sorry, I, I forgot to, to write what I mentioned orally is that this part is somehow what I mean by purity. Are the higher ones also some origin of purity itself? Or? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, you could, you could, you could consider them to be. It's like the, this whole complex is about yeah, about purity somehow for for for, for K theory. Uh, uh, okay, and so uh, this conjecture. Of Gersten, uh, let me just briefly review its status. It's a, it's a problem that in which in which uh, this presentation I must originated. Uh, this is known uh, if R uh, is of equal characteristic, or more precisely, contains uh, contains a field. Uh, this th this was uh, proved uh, this was proved by Quillen in the sort of ge geometric case. Uh, perhaps he was assuming that that field is infinite, but I mean, with further improvements, it's sort of not, not necessary. And in the general case, it's a matter of a limit argument uh, passing to semi-local rings of smooth varieties or a field that limit argument was carried out by Panin. I mean, perhaps you could appreciate the limit arguments not immediately straightforward because this like a sum over all primes and uh, it's not, I mean, the injectivity of the map is kind of more uh, direct to to, to handle in a limit, but uh, but these 
infinite Dirac sums are perhaps uh, a bit more, more delicate. Uh, and uh, in mixed characteristic, uh, modulo, modulo the case of DVRs, or modulo the case of semi-local Dedekind rings, uh, namely modulo the case when the dimension of R is at most one, uh, this is known in the case when R uh, is essentially smooth, so localization of a smooth ring, uh, over, over a Dedekind domain. Or over it, over DVR, say, for just to, 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 to be more concrete. Uh, this is uh, a, a result of uh, Gilles uh, and Levine uh, from '87, uh, and also uses adapts uh, presentation number sufficiently to mix characteristic. And uh, while they're lacking this input about K theory of DV DVRs, in particular the inject injectivity of this first arrow uh, in the case of DVRs. But much of that, they, uh, they, they sorted out how the argument, uh, how the argument would go. Uh, okay, so uh, that's 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 what were these. Uh, that's how these lemmas were first first used, and later uh, one uh, discovered that actually they're really useful to study other functors as well. And uh, there was they appeared in in many in many works since. So let me. Uh, Sorry, yeah? is it known for ZP? Uh, this, you, you mean if the DVR is ZP? Yeah. Uh, no, and uh, and the issue is somehow that you don't only need this Gerstein conjecture for ZP itself, but for like uh, gen local rings of generic points of smooth schemes over ZP, which are yeah, which are then more complicated. The rest of the fields are particularly more complicated. Uh, Okay, so, uh, so so let me actually state what these presentation lemmas uh, are, and later I'll, uh, I'll also describe how, how to use them in practice. So for this, uh, I'll fix, well, I'll, I'll do simultaneously a field case and, and the mixed characteristic somehow, or DVR case. Uh, so for this, I'll, I'll fix a semi-local uh, Dedekind uh, ring, uh, Dedekind ring O, uh, well, what, what, this, what this means is that it's a semi-local ring which is regular of dimension uh, of dimension at most one. For instance, it could be a field, or it could be a DVR, or it could could it could be kind of uh, localization of z at finitely many primes, and so, so on. Uh, frac O will, of course, be its uh, its uh, total ring of fractions. So a dedicated for you is a domain? No, no, not necessarily a domain, but okay. That's uh, like it's a product of domains. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's really sort of just a cosmetic issue. So uh, let's then state uh, what presentation lemma will uh, will mean for, well, there are many versions, but just for this talk, let's say. So uh, as I mentioned, this was, uh, first introduced and used by, by Quillen, uh, later refined by Gaber. So these were uh, in the case when O is a field. And uh, well, uh, Gilles and Levine also had their version, in fact, in many other articles. So this was over, over, over DVR somehow. And, uh, I also have a version which is uh, a little bit different and is better adapted for some other, other problems than Sheila and Levine. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss this. So uh, the, the statement is, 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 is as follows. Uh, so let's uh, give ourselves uh, a smooth, uh, smooth affine scheme Over this, over this O, over this field, or or the VR say O, uh, and I'll assume that it's a relative dimension is is positive, so that we're not just talking about uh, about the Dedekind rings itself, but really uh, there's some geometry going on. Uh, Z 
is a closed subscheme, which is nowhere dense, and it's uh, in practice it's a closed subscheme away from which the thing you want happens, away from which the class that's generically trivial is trivial. This kind of z exists typically by by limit argument or so. Z is a nowhere dense closed, uh, and x1 up to xn are points of z, uh, are points of x, uh, at which you want to show to show the statement at which at which r somehow is is the semi-local ring uh, of x. So uh, let's begin uh, let's begin with the case uh, when O is actually a field. So what's what's the statement there? Well, uh, the claim is that there there is uh, an affine open neighborhood U of these points x1 up to xn uh, that, that one fixed. There's an affine open uh, containing, containing the fixed points of interest uh, such that this affine open is a relative curve of, over, over, over an open of, of the affine space of dimension lower. So uh, with special, well, special properties such a, and also, so, so then there's also an affine open uh, S uh, of the affine space of dimension, relative dimension d minus d minus one over, over O, uh, and finally uh, a smooth morphism from from U to to S uh, of pure relative dimension one. So there's a way to express U as a relative curve over over an affine open of of the affine space. Uh, such that the close that we're interested in, uh, when restricted to U, becomes finite over this S. In particular, has finite fibers, but really finite in the scheme theoretic sense. So it's uh, globally, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, this is. I mean, there's also a finer version where you also give yourself a map from U to uh, to, to A1. And such that it's excised, but we'll, we'll we'll get to that later. I'm just sort of splitting the lemma into into into, into parts. Uh, anyway, so in comparison to Noether normalization, that would say that uh, X itself is is finite over the affine space of of dimension d, and here uh, we're realizing it as uh, as as a relative curve such that some closed which we're interested in becomes finite over that well open of of the affine space of of dimension of dimension one lower. Normalization terms, normalization for Z. It, it's like somehow yes, but compatibly with with with, with X in, in some sense, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, what's the case when O uh, is uh, is R is not necessarily a field, is arbitrary, but uh, but then we assume that Z, this uh, this closed set. Uh, is of co-dimension at least two. Uh, well, then the statement is the same. Uh, yeah, same conclusion. Over a DVR, for example, same works, but now because you're sort of losing one dimension by the fact that you cannot move the base, the base, this one-dimensional O is now fixed, uh, you assume that Z is of co-dimension at least two. And if you don't want to assume that, there's also uh, a version. Uh, well, maybe you assume that uh, Z then does not contain the generic points of, uh, of the O fibers of X, but let me uh, sort of sweep that under the carpet. Uh, it's, it's, it's the same conclusion, uh, but now uh, Z uh, intersect U is only quasi-finite over S. Which uh, in practice is, could be restrictive, but uh, yeah, well, here I'm, okay, here. really, if I was being honest, I should assume that uh, Z does not contain 
Yeah, this part C is a Shilly Levin sort of variant. Uh, uh, does not contain any uh, O fiber of, uh, of X. Which is, if certainly if Z of codimension at least two, then that condition is automatic, but this is a little milder, but the conclusion is also weaker. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, any component of any O fiber. Uh, okay. And uh, bef before, before, before roughly sketching how this is proved, I mean, I'm not really going to go into too much detail, but just uh, give, give an idea. Uh, let me mention of, uh, that there are a couple of variants. Of this, uh, for example, uh, sometimes uh, one also has uh, as an O smooth divisor D in X. Uh, and we want in the conclusion uh, this d to be uh, well also finite that one can achieve by incorporating into it into 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 z uh, but also at all over uh, over over s so here is always a field okay this is actually uh, is use, useful to, to have in practice also, there are variants in non noetherian settings when O, o is a semi local uh, proofer domain. Uh, well, proofering uh, of dimension at most one. This is, uh, this is due to uh, Ningguo and, and Fei Liu and also Arnab Kundu. Uh, so, what this is about, uh, let me uh, re recall what uh, I mean. Proofer means that every every local ring of O is a is a is a valuation ring. Now, not necessarily noetherians. Somehow, some of these uh, conjectures, purity or injectivity conjectures, if we had resolution of singularities, every valuation ring were a limit, filtered direct limit of regular rings, and uh, that the corresponding statements would hold, and uh, anyway, there's presentation lemma in that setting as well, and one can somehow uh, attack these questions directly using it. Uh, okay, so uh, let me uh, let me move on to describing the the, the idea of uh, of of the proof of this. Uh, when this part one is. It's useful. Uh, it's uh, yeah. So this is uh, roughly yeah. Um, yeah. Used when when we want to study somehow not f perhaps is not defined over all of x but over. Uh, the complement of this divisor, but uh, but we want to study it still semi-locally on X rather than on this complement. Uh, if if we have an affine scheme and we remove a divisor, and say this X was uh, just spec of a local ring, the complement of a divisor will no longer be local. But one can still ask whether uh, if that divisor is regular, whether, for instance, every vector bundle on that complement is trivial. That's Quillian's conjecture, actually. Uh, and uh, so in this sort of variant, when, we're, when you're considering a functor restricted to a complement of a smooth divisor, uh, but you're still studying that functor semi-locally on X rather than that complement, this variant uh, one is, uh, is, is, is useful. Uh, okay, so uh, so so let me briefly describe the the idea of proof of of this presentation lemma, and then I'll turn to to discussing how one actually uses this in, in it in practice, how that how that mechanism works in practice. Uh, so for this, 
since since x is affine, uh, I'll I'll fix I'll fix a closed immersion of it uh, into the affine space of some dimension over over O. Uh, okay, and uh, what one does, or one way to, to approach this, is to consider to consider a moduli space M uh, uh, that lives in, in the affine space of, of dimension d minus one times uh, times n relatively over over o uh, moduli space parameterizing uh, d minus one tuples of uh, uh, of hyperplanes. Uh, hyperplanes H1 uh, up to H D minus 1 in the original affine space. Okay, any, uh, I mean, this affine space of dimension n has uh, some n coordinates, and the hyperplane is just given for each variable, for each of those n variables, you choose a coefficient. And so, therefore, the moduli space is just somehow, perhaps it's just a complement of the origin in this, in this affine space of dimension d minus 1 times that, where you're, uh, I mean, well, not quite that, but anyway. So, uh, there's, some aff so there's some open here, which, which parameterizes such, uh, such, uh, su such hyperplanes. And... Uh, Continue now, linear hyperplanes to zero. Oh. Uh, right, right. Uh, yeah. Maps in, the, maps in the dual. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Otherwise, it's a, it's a projective space. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, okay, and so these uh, give a universal map from uh, from from X to uh, to the affine space of dimension d minus one. Uh, well, base change to base change. Yeah, like that. Uh, so, so this is associated uh, well, I suppose it's also uh, to M, right? Uh, associated uh, to, uh, to the universal HI. Basically, what, uh, if if you have these if you have these hyperplanes, then uh, you can cut x by by them, and that that map that sends the coordinates of the d minus one dimensional uh, space to to the to the equations of the hyperplanes gives gives us uh, give, gives us this this map, which is somehow the universal candidate for for what we want to build for that smooth relative curve of, of dimension one, and uh, then one uses. Bertini theorem, or and its various variants, to show to show that the open V of uh, of this of this of this moduli space uh, over which uh, over which the fiber uh, of of this universal map F is as desired. Uh, is is open and and non empty open and dense and uh, once so somehow if, if the hyperplanes are chosen generically enough then the section cutting cutting x by d minus one of them will still leave uh, x with something smooth and z will become finite and then you sort of spread out uh, uh, from from the origin uh, that's roughly how this sort of argument goes and so then if it so happens that O is uh, an infinite field, this most uh, basic case A, uh, then uh, there exists a point V because it's just an, it's just an open, non-empty open of, the, of some affine space of bigger dimension. Uh, if, if the base is an infinite field, there, there is a no point. Uh, and then the corresponding fiber of, of the capital F uh, works. For, for our map uh, for, for our map that that we want to construct up to uh, spreading out and 
Well, let me. So, what is it? XM? XM is a base change of X to M. It's a fiber product of X and M over, over O. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, okay, in, in practice, uh, I mean, I won't dwell too long on this, but in, in practice, uh, the argument is not quite as simple because, uh, well, because there's several complications to overcome. For instance, if O is a finite field, then, uh, it could so happen that there are not enough of these uh, of these hyperplanes that the open I mean that this open has no no O point uh, and then the argument kind of uh, yeah uh, this, uh, in the case when O is a finite field one uses hypersurfaces instead and uh, more uh, more fancy version of Bertini proved uh, proved by Gaber. Uh, and or alternatively, one could use Poonin's version as well, uh, although Gaber's is kind of more convenient for this. Uh, uh, of, of Bertini. And in mixed characteristic, or o, more precisely, over, over when the case when O is, uh, is of dimension 1, when O is a DVR, for example, so if O is of dimension 1, the strategy is to uh, is to lift from the residue fields, is to make the construction of the residue fields and then lift. Uh, but that uh, doesn't quite work. Is 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 to lift from the residue fields. But since the conclusion of this uh, about this morphism f is that z is actually finite rather than quasi finite over s. That doesn't uh, really work like that. I mean, you cannot use, you cannot lift finiteness in something affine. Uh, you cannot check that on a, on some fiber. So uh, instead, uh, okay. So, but uh, this uh, has some additional difficulties. So let me just mention uh, how one well how one overcome comes them. So to get to get this crucial in practice uh, uh, finiteness over S, one actually works uh, with compactifications. Uh, projective compactification and one uh, does the arg similar argument uh, projectively. There are also complications with finite residue fields coming in and uh, in fact one works with some blow up of weighted blow up of this compactification but Okay, whatever. And so uh, another another point is that some of these excises that one is interested in uh, may lie uh, on may not lie on any uh, on any closed fiber. May lie in a generic uh, O fiber of X and not specialize because X is affine. Not specialize uh, to any. Uh, to any closed uh, O fiber of X, which, which, well, in this type of situation, it means that we cannot access them by uh, by lifting from the residue fields, because then when we shrink, we may miss the excise that that are like that, and to uh, to sort of uh, tackle this this type of type of difficulty, uh, what, one trick is to spread out. Uh, spread out the whole situation in somehow new directions and glue glue in those directions uh, to O. Uh, spread out and glue in uh, new points. New, new points to, to O, new points of height 1 uh, to, to O. Uh, and these points kind of correspond to, to directions. Uh, of specialization uh, in in which in which xi specialize specialize to to x. Okay. Well, if you wish, this is just like really a fairly technical point, but it's a cute idea. Uh, 
if, if it so happens that some XI does not specialize to X, you can just somehow artificially glue in another direction into which it does, uh, it does specialize and then uh, apply, uh, apply, apply the original statement, the original strategy for that bigger, bigger O, which is also why it's useful to have semi-local O even if one starts with a DVR. Uh, okay, so uh, let me perhaps uh, now turn to how one actually uses these presentation lemmas to, uh, to, to, to prove stuff. So how to use, how, how is this presentation actually useful? Uh, yeah? Uh -huh. So in the case of the, in the finite field case, uh -huh. I mean, can you do the schematic where you take the modular space of hypersurfaces and then run this argument? Yeah, it's not quite like that because uh, for each fixed degree, like if you want to consider moduli space, you have to fix a degree of your hypersurfaces, right? And so uh, you can still run the argument, but at the end you may still be left with an open where which is too small, like for every degree a priori. So what you do is you choose first hypersurface and then choose the second one that will depend on the choice of the first one and the third, which will depend on the choice of the first two, and they will not have the same degree, which is why these weighted blobs come, okay. Uh, and, uh... I mean, just take a sufficiently large degree, right? But that, okay, but then it's like, it's not clear that any of these degrees will work a priori. Perhaps you could use Poonen's version where it's about asymptotics. There is this the uh, theorem of Poonen, but he does it for certain problem. But yeah. the general aspect of this is that the, when the degree goes to infinity, the probability that something will happen at certain points of geometric is computed in the expected way by but, mm. but the problem is it is not a method theorem, it just does it in, then you have to repeat, it's some kind of argument for other mm. problems. And each time, some, there are some cases where people did it, but it's, it's kind of, it's a lot of work. Each, I mean, each time is you have to, yeah, to I, do the same thing. So I very much appreciate what you're saying. <laughs> uh, no, uh, the, the, the thing is, <laughs> Uh, the thing is that if one just wants to use an off-the-shelf theorem of Poonen style, then if one was just dealing with a single hypersurface, I think one can find such such one. But since we're doing d minus one at the same time, and then each next one will have to depend on the previous choice, it's kind of not. Uh, I mean, you know, there will have to be some serious work if you want to. Choose the degree, but the degrees are not the same. So to increase the degree, then you have to do something. Okay. Yeah, you choose the first degree, and then the next degree will depend on the first choice. And uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So how how to use uh, how to use this presentation lemma? Well, the uh, here uh, the key is, uh, is the following proposition, which transforms these these presentations into relative curves into 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 problems about actual uh, relative affine line. So. Uh, we give ourselves a smooth affine uh, curve C uh, over over a semi-local uh, ring A. Uh, so A is kind of a semi-localization semi of, of this S at, at the images of the Xi. Uh, and we give ourselves uh, and a finite closed subscheme Z uh, in C, that's sort of the intersection of Z with U in, in that setting. So in this setting, uh, a smoother affine relative curve over semi-local base and an a finite Z, uh, we can embed this excisively into A1. Uh, there is a, well, there's a caveat that will come, but, uh, but the basic statement is that there is an Isnevich excision square Uh, of the following type, uh, where, uh, so first we have our C, okay. In fact, uh, C will get replaced by a smaller affine open, C prime, which however still contains the Z that we're interested in. Uh, and uh, this affine open will have a map to, to A1, uh, an et al map, which embeds Z excisively, namely, Z gets mapped isomorphically onto a closed subscheme of A1, of a relative A1, and uh, this, this is a Cartesian square. So it's really this uh, Nevich excisive et al, and over Z is an is isomorphism. So if we have an excisive kind of uh, F. You want the complement of Z. 
Uh, I don't know if you're writing a distinguished Nesnevich square. Or well, uh, okay. No, I, I'm just writing this Cartesian square. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the way this is used is then if uh, if one has uh, yeah, so uh, to, 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 to then to, to descend a, a value of uh, yeah, so this sort of gives. Uh, a Cartesian square where f of a1, assuming that f is contravariant, is somehow f of a1 uh, minus z, mapping to c minus z, c prime. Yeah, uh, if f is excisive, then to give to give a section somehow over a1 suffices to give compatible sections over over c prime and a complement of the z, uh, and somehow in practice away from the z, the, the element is trivial, so it does descend to a1, and this is somehow how one how one passes to a1 using this this kind of uh, ex, ex, excisive square. Uh, ho however, well, there's a caveat. I mean, the statement cannot be true as I, as I wrote it because, for instance, A could be a finite field and Z could be, uh, could just have too many points and it could, I mean, that would prohibit it being inside, inside A1 over that particular finite field. So, uh, granted that there is no uh, sort of finite field obstruction to doing this. To embedding to embedding z into a1 you can imagine what that means and and if there is a finite field obstruction then there are tricks to kind of get rid of it but I will not really go into them because well because it's a little of a bit of a side note uh, okay so uh, this proposition is how is first of all not terribly difficult to prove and is how the presentation lemma is is uh, uh, is used. Uh, there's also a variant if uh, if z is merely quasi finite, as in, as in this part c, merely a quasi finite, uh, then we have the same, but with well, the cost of that is that a1 gets replaced by a smaller affine open, replaced by an affine open, uh, by some affine open over which one doesn't have sort of too much control, w of a1, uh, and c prime containing now no longer all of z, but, uh, uh, and, but it could be made to contain any fixed uh, a finite z prime. in z. Well, okay, anyway, there's a variant also if z is quasi-finite. It's a priori a little bit less useful because then after the excision one is left with an open of, of the affine line and that doesn't just plug in very well to a one invariance type of properties of f. But one can still, uh, yeah, sometimes it's useful. Uh, okay, so uh, the upshot of all, of all this is that a presentation lemma plus this proposition Uh, give us a uh, really, well, uh, and also in this Nevich excision for, for this functor f, give us a really kind of uh, concrete uh, strategy to reduce, uh, to reduce the injectivity or as we'll see also later uh, purity uh, questions uh, to, to studying to studying the map, the A1 invariance uh, map from, uh, from, from A to, to the relative affine line, rough, roughly speaking. Uh, well, okay, so, uh, so what, can we, what can we prove with this? Uh, what, what new can we prove with this strategy? So now I'll specialize, to, I'll specialize my, my functor f 
and there are many different choices. I will uh, just choose my favorite one, in fact. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but I mean, there are also other variants. For instance, one consider a talc homology or... Uh, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, let me just uh, try to illustrate with some particular case. Uh, so for this, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll recall the conjecture uh, of Groton de Cancer about torsors. In the property you state is pulling, pulling by the presentation, presentation lemma of the... Which uh, proposition you mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, this is, uh, the proposition is an extra kind of thing. It's not, it's in addition to the presentation lemma. But the pr proposition, I mean, sometimes actually the proposition and the presentation lemma are put together in a one sort of bigger statement together, like uh, this is, uh, yeah, uh, this is often done when O is a field, but anyway, one can separate them like that, and the proposition is not terribly difficult to prove, but it's an additional sort of tool in, to, the, to the presentation lemma. Uh, okay, so I, so I want to uh, illustrate with some applications to the grundig sayer conjecture. So what this is about, uh, it's about a functor h1, h1g, and so one gives ourselves uh, a reductive group scheme G over a semi-local regular ring. So smooth affine uh, R group scheme whose uh, fibers are uh, connected reductive groups in the usual, in the usual sense. A semi-local regular ring R. And the claim of this, uh, of this conjecture is the injectivity of that same kind of uh, map that we also saw in the Gersten sequence, this first first term. This is also, by the way, a purity version first, but uh, that's a bit of a different story. Uh, okay, so since these are non-abelian cohomology because G is typically not commutative, the injectivity is phrased as the triviality of the kernel for this for this pullback of H1. So that's what, uh, that's what the conjecture says. And let me just comment in case you haven't thought about these types of questions that like this H1 is really the, is really a notation. I mean, it's just, you, you have uh, H1, these are isomorphism classes of G torsors, of G torsors over R, up to isomorphism. And so uh, a G torsor is, a, well, in particular, it's a smooth affine scheme over R. And what the, what the conjecture says is that if that smooth affine scheme has a, has a point over the fraction field of, of, of R, then it actually has a point over, over R itself. So it's a fairly sort of, uh, co con well, somewhat concrete thing. Namely, you, you have a bunch of equations over R describing your torsor. If those equations have a solution over K, then they must have solution over R. And well, rephrase it in this way, it's actually, uh, Studying rational points is, is pretty delicate, and uh, anyway, this uh, what I want to convey with that is that it's not just some manipulation of, of cohomology; is that actually there's some uh, s deep deep geometric stuff going on in in the statement. Uh, in this non-abelian setting, there's uh, well, the long exact sequences are sort of uh, less less useful, perhaps. Uh, okay, anyway, so uh, let me actually uh, mention which cases of the conjecture one can prove using the strategy, or which have been proved so far. Uh, yeah, this presentation, I'm a strategy. So in contrast to the to the Gersten case, where the DVR case was not known, and that was kind of a um, well major stumbling stumbling block in the Gilles Levine strategy, the DVR case here is actually known due to work of Nisnevich. And so the presentation lemma uh, in the sequel characteristic uh, case A, it it uh, well. So in all of this, I'll actually not give attributions because uh, well because that's not really the Point. Let me, I mean, I don't want to make this talk about, about the grotnik sayer conjecture, but some people who, uh, Pan and Fedorov and uh, also myself, the, the, there are many other people. Uh, anyway, let me uh, just state what the results are rather than uh, being too pedantic about the history itself. Uh, so, 
the case when R contains a field, uh, roughly speaking, follows from this sort of strategy uh, in, in the case of the presentation lemma over a field. The presentation lemma uh, in mixed characteristic under this finite, well, under this co-dimension at least two assumption also gives a case here. So this is the case when R is unramified and G is uh, quasi-split. So unramified for the purposes of this statement uh, means that it's geometrically regular over some DVR, uh, over the Dedekind ring, geometrically regular over a Dedekind ring uh, O. Uh, okay, so uh, for example, over, over, over CP, in which case it would be that uh, the residue characteristic P that prime p is not in the square of the maximal ideal if r is, if r is local, and, and here g is quasi-split. Where was lemma a and lemma b? Sorry? Yeah, this, this case, b. I, I'm just saying that by using this presentation lemma in diff Pre Presentation lemma Part, part B and uh, a bunch of other stuff uh, implies implies this case, and the presentation lemma part C and a bunch of other stuff, which actually is kind of more complicated stuff than in, in this part B. But anyway, <laughs> uh, implies that uh, uh, implies the case when uh, R is still unramified. and G is either uh, generically totally isotropic. So that means, uh, well, that's a kind of more general, that's a fairly, it's a fairly mild condition, it's this, uh, which is a lot more general than, than being quasi-split. And it means that uh, every factor of the adjoint group has a GM every factor of the adjoint group over the fraction field, or uh, fraction ring, I guess, uh, of, of R, uh, contains, contains a split GM. Yeah, the, anyway, this is, uh, it all contains a parabolic, in, in other words. Or uh, the other case, when so case, when uh, G is a constant, this sends to O itself. Uh, this can be used by, this can be done by using this presentation of part C uh, and also, well, other stuff that I'm not really talking about. But, uh, okay, well, uh, so that's sort of an illustration for, for this injectivity. Uh, and I would like to conclude with, 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 with the purity aspect. So what about purity? Uh, how, how does one use presentation lemma to approach purity questions? Uh, uh, so here, one can use the following lemma. So if f is valued uh, in abelian groups, uh, so it's uh, commutative, yeah? Uh, so that kind of eliminates the, the kind of functors uh, synchron Dixier conjecture, but may, includes many others. Uh, one, one can use norms kind of norm techniques and the following lemma. Uh, and the following lemma, which I'll call norm lemma, which actually is, I mean, it's not a really difficult statement, but it's uh, its useful, just like that uh, proposition about three embeddings into A1. So uh, A is a semi-local ring. Uh, and now we're, we'll, we'll be working over P1, so we kind of did already the excision and patching stuff, uh, and we're working over P1, and in P1 we have two closed subschemes, Z and Z infinity, which are both, uh, well, A finite, or since these are now projective equivalent to A quasi finite, I mean, that's the same thing now, uh, A finite closed. Uh, and we give ourselves a section uh, of uh, of P1 
away from away from this z infinity, and we want to study somehow the uh, pullback pullback of some of some section of, of f and under the section s. Uh, the conclusion is there's a, that there is an affinite map. Uh, pi from P1 uh, to P1 uh, satisfying the following conditions. So uh, this Z infinity is the stuff that goes, I mean, is, uh, is goes to infinity. Uh, then the preimage of the zero section is our rational point, is our rational section S, and some Z zero with, uh, which does not meet the bad locus Z. And finally, the preimage of, uh, of one is just Z one, uh, which, well, that's really just notation, uh, such that this Z one does not meet, does not meet Z. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, does not mean Z. Uh, okay, so let me describe how to use this, uh, how, how to use this sort of thing, what, what it, its point is of finding such a map. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, okay, so presentation lemma plus Excision plus blah blah blah. It uh, it 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 in practice it, it can be used to reduce purity questions to the setting of this relative p one and to when uh, to when in this above lemma a is regular for in, well just okay yeah a is regular uh, and the section the section uh, so with, say with fraction field k. Just to shorten notation a little bit with fraction field capital K, and this section restricted to K does not meet the bad locus. So generically, the section factors uh, through uh, through the good locus, which is a complement of Z and also of, of Z infinity, because the section does not meet Z infinity. Uh, and what we what we have in this in this in the setting uh, some some alpha. Uh, some section of the functor away from away from, well first of all from z infinity which is a locus where it's kind of not defined and uh, and away and away from z uh, such that uh, alpha restricted to the fraction field of the whole situation of p1 even over fraction field of a uh, is uh, is somehow unramified. Unramified on, uh, yeah, unramified element in this fraction field of, of the projective line over k. And unramified uh, means that it extends uh, the risky semi locally to each point, uh, well, to each point uh, of, of, of P1k. Whenever you fix uh, find many points. You can find a neighborhood where the section extends, but maybe you cannot find uh, compatible such extensions. And what we want in this in this uh, setting is purity, and which is uh, which is to extend the section restricted to the generic point pullback of alpha to some to some to some element. Alpha tilde defined over all of over all of a. Of course, this, if the section S actually uh, does not meet Z or does not meet Z, then one could just take the pullback of alpha itself for alpha tilde. But the whole point is that Z probably meets the section, just generically does not meet the, the, the section. But we nevertheless want to somehow extend the pullback of this alpha to an element of, of all of of all of f uh, under this unramifiedness assumption. And so the norm lemma is. Uh, Gives gives us a way to do that, namely, well, under by well, assuming that f is still uh, is abelian, as I mentioned. So the normal lemma 
tells us how to do that. In fact, it's it's really it's really simple. We may choose. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So in practice, f is such that uh, unramified uh, any unramified beta in this uh, uh, fraction field of P1K is such that it's constant somehow. Its restriction to any point uh, does not depend on the point. Does not depend on on, on the K point T of, of P1. So somehow on ramifiedness over OP1, oftentimes F set, like if, if the section is defined overall of P1, it would just say that the kind of the restriction of this beta to any point is, is independent of, um, of the point. This is, I mean, many F sa satisfy this, many F that we discussed. And so uh, the norm lemma then gives a really simple recipe of how to do the purity extension. We may simply choose alpha to be the norm of uh, along z1 uh, minus the norm along the z0 of the restriction of the of the of this of this of this element alpha, and this this kind of property will 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 give us that uh, generically it's it's just the alpha that we started from, and uh, just to conclude, let me mention the sample application of this of this norm thing. Understand the definition of the extension. You, uh, um, we have alpha uh, yeah. defined away from co-dimension two. We had a Can you draw a picture? Uh, yeah. So, uh, so I have my uh, p, p p1 somehow over a, over spec a, and I have a closed uh, z infinity, and I have a closed uh, closed Z, uh, and then uh, I have a map pi to another copy of, of, of P1, uh, such that the pre-image of, of, of zero is, uh, is the union of a section S and, and, a part, and a part Z0, which does not meet, which does not meet my Z, and the pre-image of one is, uh, is, uh, is a Z1, which does not does not meet meet z. So the whole point of that normal is that these z zero and z one they don't meet the bad locus, and so we are allowed to take the norms. I mean, alpha is defined in the neighborhood of these z zero and z one, so we we are allowed to take the norms from z zero to and from z one. The, the the problem is that we cannot do it on on s because well that meets probably the bad locus where alpha is not defined. But uh, okay, so. The sample application is that for unramified regular R, uh, we can we may reduce the Grondig cell conjecture that I uh, that I talked about uh, to simply connected groups to simply connected G, and for this uh, the functor to use. Is uh, is a functor which is kind of H zero of a so-called uh, crossed homomorphism from the simply connected cover of G to to G itself. Um, okay. Well. Uh, anyway, I'm I'm over time, so let me just uh, let me just stop this. And sorry for for going over. Any questions for Is it a functor of abelian groups? In fact, yes, because uh, this this crossed homomorphism stuff. This is uh, the associated Picard stacks are the same as for the centers of these groups. Ah, okay. This is like the this is the Borovoi kind of stuff. Uh, module ah, this is a cross module. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this is a cross cross module. Yeah, both people call cross module which defines a Picard. Category and under yeah. some condition, uh, it defines uh, uh, 
Well, it defines more community. Well, not because well, it depends on the condition of the person or what. Yeah, this kind of formalism of such is uh, Brin's article in Grotendieck Festschrift, uh, which con I mean contains definition of SH1 and H H2 and the whole. Yeah, it has more than probably you want to know about. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so secretly, this is actually a billion because it only depends on the center. And then, you, therefore, you can apply the norm stuff to it. Uh, so, okay, okay, okay. Yeah? Just, just to clarify it, okay. So you're saying you take this function mm -hmm. and you plug in this kind of diagram to it. And then you get. Yeah, I, I, I take this functor and I prove purity for it using this norm lemma and this kind of strategy of uh, what that I explained here. And that purity allows me to, if I then consider long exact sequences of non abelian cohomology, allows me to control the difference between torsors and their G and, and drive simply connected. Uh, so, so can we sometimes uh, uh, get uh, AY invariant, uh, AY invariant by the presentation name up with some condition? Mm. Like the roast, uh, his psych defines the psych module. I remember, like he gave some condition for psych module, and I, I feel like he proves this AY invariant by using this presentation name. Up. I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, the presentation lemma is more to pass to the setting of A1 itself. I mean, afterwards, one can try to use tricks like that of re-embedding into A1 in a different way or doing norms or something. I, but by its, yeah, that would have, I mean, it would have to be specific to a function you're studying or I, I don't really have. Anyway, what's about, so for what cycle modules, there is an extension of Quillen's argument so that to get gas and that is complex. For mm. Okay, and so in particular for the cohomology, uh, for this loss, I mean, you have AI invariance, what you said for this, but it's a part, well, I'm not. Uh, okay, it's a part so of it's a, Okay, so the. It could maybe be used to reduce AI invariance to the case of fields or something. Mm, perhaps. Yeah. So that's actually exactly what Alan and I do. So we want to prove that our typical cohomology is A1 invariant on regular schemes. Mm. So we look at the difference between our cohomology and its A1 localization. And we use these sorts of presentation lemmas to check that the difference satisfies Gersten. So it's determined by the values on fields. Mm. And there we can check A1 invariant. I see. Yeah. In this sort of direction, I can also mention uh, one thing, namely, uh, well, one has this expression as a relative curve. And uh, later, one can re-embed and make that relative curve A1. And afterwards, one can sort of start iterating proce the process, do the presentation lemma on S somehow, make S itself a relative curve or something yet of lower dimension, re-embed that, and kind of keep doing that until you're left with an open of the affine space itself. Or that somehow is a, sometimes a procedure to reduce uh, from a general smooth scheme to just the affine space or an open in the affine space by just iterating this sort of process. I mean, this depends on what problem you're considering. Well, I don't know. Can you say again? So, the so, so uh, I mean, he, here we are expressing uh, the smooth scheme as a relative curve over S. Yeah, but once you, you have the finite thing which you embed in a fine space, you get this situation where you reduce to essentially to a fine the open sets in a fine affine line but but then but then su suppose you also know something about the affine line itself over fields for instance over a function field of s f that your functor is co constant on such then you would get that there is another another z prime here closed nowhere dense such that away from that your functor some, something is trivial and now you're you're applying the presentation lemma again to now to this pair and you just keep the drag the a1 along for a ride and sort of uh, by applying the presentation lemma here, you're reducing the dimension once more and passing to a kind of relative dimension to affine space and key. That's, well, it's just sort of a principle. Um, we get new uh, purity results for uh, bit rings 
for smooth seeds and BBRs? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, me personally, no, but, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, potentially. Uh, to be honest, I'm not uh, precisely up to speed of what is known and what is not known about Vitrings. Uh, I, I know there's, there's literature about that and perhaps things are known in equal characteristic, but... Uh, I think like the mention last night of the two uh, is... is uh, uh, okay. Uh, and mixed characteristic. Yeah, sorry. So, like, uh, uh -huh. I mean, sorry, it's just for... Um, yeah, just uh, regular local ring less than or equal to two, uh, dimension less than or equal to two. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I haven't thought about it. Personally, but I, I mean, it's possible that one could attack it using a, this strategy. There, there's also uh, the thing I was thinking about is that there's also two parts of that. Uh, for the vitrings, one can also consider the injectivity question and then the purity question. So for the injectivity, there is more known, and I think uh, I've looked at papers where this is uh, considered say worth in the equal characteristic case at least. And in uh, unramified mixed characteristic, yeah, one can definitely apply this apply these methods when. Uh, uh, it, yeah, it's it, it's it's definitely of the same flavor as, for instance, uh, this H one G or a Brouwer group or, or or so on. It it's it's quite plausible that one could advance in this direction. Okay, there are no other questions. Let's thank Christine for moderating. Thank you. Thank you.